Hi everyone, Cassie here from Primrose Dawn, and today I'm here to show you a couple of pattern hacks for the Desiree bra. This version uses lace all throughout the cradle and the band and the cups, and also the cups have been modified to be a more balconette style. Let's take a look at the changes. Let's begin with bridge G and the cradle. We're going to join them together in one piece so that the lace can be continuous along the bottom. Now bridge G already has the elastic allowance removed from the bottom because it's already designed for lace, but we will need to remove the elastic allowance from the cradle. So just cut along the solid line for your size all the way across. Now I'm also going to remove the seam allowance on one piece. just so that we can join them together more easily. Now it's tempting to say, well, I could just draw across the bottom with a ruler and make it a straight line. But as you can see, we would cut off all this uh, allowance here where we have to sew the elastic behind the cradle. So we can't do that. So I am going to show you a trick. And I'm gonna be using the lines on my cutting mat here. If you don't have a cutting mat with a grid, you can just draw a line on your piece of paper and put your pieces on top. So I'm going to align the straight edge with this straight line on my mat. And so I'm aligning this point here with both of the pieces. This is where they're gonna be joined at the top and we don't want to make the wire line any bigger. So I'm going to use my awl here as a helping hand and rotate the cradle. Oops, here, how about I weigh this down? Weigh that down with my tape. So I'm going to rotate the cradle until this is touching that same line. This is the, uh, the seam line for the band, okay? So this is touching the line and this is touching the line. So essentially, we're going to have a straight line here. So before I let go of my all, I'm going to tape right here. So the pieces are overlapped just a little bit on the bottom. If I use my ruler, I can get a straight line from the seam line to the seam line. See, I'll have to put a little bit of paper underneath. As you can see, we'll be getting rid of just a little bit here. Okay, I've got some paper I can put underneath. I so don't really need to put it in here. Okay. I also got a red pen so that you can see this better. So I'm aligning my ruler, making it straight from the seam line here to the seam line here. Okay. And then we will be cutting that off. Now what about this sort of wonky join here, right? It's kind of coming up to a point and we can just smooth that out, okay? So smooth it there on the seam line and then make the same sort of smoothing action along the cutting line. So I'll cut this out and I'll come back and show you. Okay, so here is my new piece. I'm going to write lace in big letters so that the next time I use this pattern, I don't grab this and think that it has elastic allowance in the bottom. Now you might notice where these pieces overlapped, there's about, oh, a quarter inch overlap here, which I'm not really that worried about. But if you are worried about it, you can adjust either um, from this line or the, uh, the side seam line and take that into account. You'll want to add whatever this amount is that's that's being overlapped so you could actually add it to both lines um, divide that amount in half 
for me, this looks like it's about a quarter of an inch, so I could add an eighth of an inch here, an eighth of an inch here, and blend it up to nothing at the top. The next piece is the band, and this is very simple. All we need to do is cut off the elastic allowance because we're going to put lace on top of the power net and then we will sew the elastic behind the edge of the lace. Just cut off the elastic allowance. Be sure and mark lace on your pattern piece so that the next time you go to use your pattern, you don't think that there's an elastic allowance to turn it back. Now let's move on to the cup. So we're going to alter the upper cup, or the inner cup, excuse me, to be more of a balconette style. So what I want to do is get rid of some of the, the upper portion of the cup here and have it go more straight across. Now looking at the notches in my cup, I think I, I want to make the edge of the inner cup end where my notch already is, right here. And that just happens to be the place that I like. If you want it to land in another area, that's fine. So I'm going to take my ruler and go from the seam line over to this notch. And I'm going to draw it straight since we're working with lace and we have to have a straight line. Okay, So this is going to be where the edge of the lace is. Now when I go to sew the inner cup to the outer cup, I already have a notch here to mark where the end of the inner cup is going to be. But if you're moving uh, the neckline to a different position that doesn't align with the notch, you'll want to walk your seam lines together, you know, seam line to seam line, and then add a notch into your upper outer cup of where the neckline is going to end. So now I just need to cut along my new neckline. Okay. Well, I wrote it in pencil, but I'll write in big letters. Lace. And maybe balconette. And that's it for the pattern changes. I have all my pieces cut out, and I like to lay them out on my cutting board, kind of in how it'll be in the finished bra, so I know what goes where. And I can be sure to have the especially the lower outer cup piece oriented in the correct direction. Now I'm using my lace with a stabilized trico, which is actually, uh, this trico fabric has been bonded with another fabric, so it's a little bit thick. So I won't be lining this particular bra. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use temporary spray adhesive to attach these two layers together and I will be treating them as one piece. I could sew the lace pieces together and then use the black fabric as a lining, but you could see the seam allowances between the lace and the lining fabric, and I don't wanna see that. I want all the seam allowances to be on the inside. So I'm using Sulky KK2000 Temporary Spray Adhesive. I prefer this one uh, over the Odif 505, which I've previously used because this one just evaporates uh, with a little bit of time after you work with it, as opposed to the Odif 505, which needs to be removed through uh, dry cleaning. And I haven't had any luck removing that with just regular washing. So to begin with, I'm going to sew the outer cup pieces together, and then I'm going to attach the inner cup piece. And I will come back and show you that in a moment. So right before I began to sew, I realized I hadn't cut out the lace pieces to go over the band. Now you can only put lace over the band if it stretches as much as your band fabric stretches. So if you're using a rigid lace, you can't really cover the band with rigid lace. It won't stretch enough. So I have sewn the outer cut pieces together and I top stitched and just trimmed away the excess seam allowance. Now, how to sew the inner cup to the outer cup. I have my inner cup folded in half. I have used the spray adhesive to attach the lace. Now, if you're using a lining along with the uh, main fabric for the outer cup piece, you can sandwich the inner cup in the middle and you will put your lining piece on top and sew your seam 
that way and the top edge of the inner cup is going to end where this notch is up here and you would just keep sewing and everything would be finished once you turn it out but since i don't have a lining i'm going to attach my inner cup um, as far as the notch up here where it ends and then once i turn it out this upper edge seam allowance will automatically turn back and i'm just going to top stitch that along with the rest of this seam so that's how i'm going to sew that and i will come back once it's finished I have finished my seam and before I top stitch it, I wanted to show you that there is quite a bit of bulk here. And if I were just to pull this open, it, this is a really thick and bulky seam and we don't want quite that much bulk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim down just the two layers of the seam allowance that are on, will be on the inside so that once this is folded back, this um, inner cup seam allowance will, will still be a quarter inch long and will allow me some extra room for top stitching. And then I can trim down the rest of the excess of that. And as you can see, this is starting to want to turn in. So I will just be folding that back and top stitching it down. I have finished the top stitching on the cup seam. And as you can see, the seam allowance on this upper portion of the outer cup, which doesn't have the inner cup attached to it, has been turned back and top stitched. And I have trimmed away the excess seam allowance. I've already gone ahead with the next step too, which is to sew the center seam. Oops, I guess I didn't spray that enough. We'll press down hard enough. I sewed the center seam and top stitched it. And I also realized that without a lining, I didn't have um, a way to finish the top edge of the bridge, which has now been attached to the cradle. Um, so I just folded it back a quarter of an inch and I stitched it down. So now I will be um, attaching these layers together with the spray glue and sewing the band to this cradle unit and I will be top stitching that as well since there won't be um, a sandwich going on since I haven't cut out a lining so I will come back once I've done that. Okay I have attached the bands to the cradle unit and even though I usually press open my seam allowances and top stitch on both sides when it comes to this side seam on the bra I prefer to press all the seam allowances to one side and then top stitch it down. And it does create some bulk, but I feel like that's almost like having a piece of boning there. I don't usually put boning on the side of my bras, so I feel like that's a good alternative. Maybe that's just my sort of strange way of thinking. So the bottom uh, of the bra is now ready to have the elastic attached. So here is my elastic. Now our normal procedure is to attach it on the outside and then flip it in, but we're not going to do that because we don't want to lose the scallops of the lace. So we're going to attach the elastic to the inside of the bra, and you could have the picos going whichever way you want. And be sure to have the plush side up because that's the side you want against your skin. And just attach it the way you normally would. And put the rows of zigzag close to each of the edges. So I would use a medium with zigzag, um, maybe the beginning row, I'd probably start up here, do the top one, and then go back and do the bottom. And just make sure that the picos on the elastic, if you put them facing down, don't extend past the, um, the lowest point of the scallop on the lace. So you'd want it probably, oops, like that, and not hanging down like that. And if you wanted to put a couple of pins in and then flip it to the right side, and just make sure that everything is hidden behind the lace. I have added the elastic along the bottom of the bra and it looks like I wasn't quite as careful as I thought I was because uh, you can see a few of the picos so maybe don't do what I did and turn the picos facing upwards and I ended up only using one row of stitching because as I was sewing it it was wider than half the width of the elastic so I think it was okay to just use one pass, but you do whatever 
you think is going to work best for you. So now that that's finished, we can complete sewing the bra just as it's written in the directions. So you'll want to attach the cups to the cradle, add the channeling, add the wires, finish the upper edges of the bra with fold over elastic, attach the straps, and attach the hook and eye closure. And then you will be finished. So I'll come back with the finished bra. And here is the finished bra. I'm really happy with how it came out. Outside with all the fold over elastic, straps, hook and eye. Let's take a look at the inside, the channeling. Okay. And let's take one final look on the dress form. Here it is. Let's take a cold view. If you've enjoyed this pattern hack tutorial, and bye for now.